What's up everyone? John Anthony here from John Anthony Lifestyle. I wanted to make a video on what to do to prepare when you're traveling to a new city. Okay, or if you're moving to a new city, I announced on my channel that I'm going to be moving, or not moving, traveling. It's going to be a long trip. I'm going to be traveling to Florianopolis, Brazil uh, for almost a month, just a little shy of a month. And I wanted to go through, as I'm actively engaged in like certain preparations, I wanted to go through... Uh, what I do, because I've, I've traveled all around the world, I want to I go through what I do before each trip in order to maximize my results with girls in that location. Okay, so item number one, you want to have Tinder Plus, okay, and you want to set your Tinder location to this particular area. Okay, for those of you that are not familiar, going all the way back to the basics, Tinder is a dating app. Most of you already have it. Uh, if you have Tinder Plus, which is a paid monthly thing, it's like 20 bucks a month, then you can change your location, your geographic uh, position. You can change it to another city, and it appears to those people like you are in that city. Okay. And as a small caveat, you're going to want to, in your settings in the Tinder app, you're going to want to turn your, uh, it's like turn your how your distance, I don't remember the, the term, like basically for others to see how far they are from you, turn your location and your distance off because then it's going to say however many fuck, like tons of miles away you are, okay, and that's going to influence them from swiping on you because it doesn't look like you're, you're there anymore. It looks like you've gone back home and you, you were just there visiting or something like that. So you want to turn that off and what that does is it just appears now that you are living in this city, okay? So that's number one. And now... I usually start a couple weeks, if I'm going to be taking like a longer trip, like last year, I think it was last year, yeah, last, or no, no, sorry, 20, because now we're in 2020, so in 2018, I took a trip to Medellin, Colombia, and then I took another trip a couple months later to Bogota, Colombia, but I was in Medellin for 18 days, and I started a couple weeks early on Tinder, with Tinder Plus, and I ramped it up, especially the week before. And what I was able to do was stack my whole first week of my trip with like two to four dates per day, like no joke, okay? And I go in and the leads, well, not, this video is not about how to manage all that amount of leads and scheduling and rescheduling and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But in my calendar, in my phone, this girl at this time, this girl at this time, this girl at this time, and I had looked up where my Airbnb was going to be and I had picked venues nearby my Airbnb to have good logistics on a date, okay? So you can do this groundwork rather than, because I've, I've done the trips where I've arrived and like haven't done shit, okay? And you have no rotation. Like I always leave like a big rotation behind in, in whatever city I'm traveling from. If you arrive and you just like start from scratch and you didn't do any groundwork up front, you have no rotation. You are, you're just like dead in the water. You have no leads, okay? Um, and some of you are like, well, what if I just want to see the sites? That's fine. The purpose of this video is if you are traveling to an area and want to fuck a lot of girls there. How do you optimize that? Okay. Um, I'll go back into some more Tinder stuff in a moment. I made a, a list here. Uh, number two, you're going to want to use the Michelle Thomas. It's M-I-C-H-E-L Thomas, space Thomas, language learning method. Okay. I was just listening to this at the gym for Portuguese. This is how I learned... Spanish, and I became fluent in Spanish by living in Puerto Rico for a year, and I lived in San Diego and Miami, and I lived in Dallas, and I was in Colombia, etc. Um, and I had, I've had Spanish girlfriends, and rotation girls, or not Sp Spanish speaking, that barely spoke English. So, so I can speak Spanish fluently, but it started with that course. I took Spanish five years in, in high school, in middle school, and that didn't do shit, which is generally the case. Usually if you take it in school, you don't really learn very much. This course, it's only 10 hours. Okay, it's eight CDs, but they're online. He focused, they, they just went through in the beginning of this Portuguese course again, and Portuguese is very similar to Spanish, so it's going to be quick to learn for me. But they say in um, the beginning of the course that there's a study with the New York Times where they look at like a, a typical piece or whatever, or they look through, through the New York Times, and it's just 600 words repeated over and over. So, so we're, we're largely using the same words. So they train you, you start right off in this, this Michelle Thomas method language learning class, they train you on the most common words, the most common phrases, the most common rules, et cetera, et cetera, and you start speaking the language right away, 
you're speaking simple sentences and it keeps gain, like adding in complexity. Okay. And after like five or six hours of this training, you don't have to do it all at once. You can start having conversations with people. Okay. And then it gets into more advanced stuff. This is the quickest way I've found. I've, I've, I've looked through all kinds of different resources. It's the quickest way I've found to learn a language quickly. Okay. I learned Russian on the plane ride to Ukraine when I moved to Ukraine. Okay. I learned Polish this way. It crushed. I was taking Polish class twice a week. It crushed what I was learning in class. Um, and I, I've lived in Portugal before. I lived in Kashkais, which is near Lisbon. It's like 30 minutes uh, west of Lisbon. But enough people spoke English where I didn't need to learn Portuguese and I could get by with my Spanish anyways. But now I'm learning Portuguese just because I'm going to be in Brazil where a lot of people are going to be not speaking English as well. And I need to make a video on my experience in, in Portugal because that was quite a fucking time. I had three different... Brazilian fuck buddies. One was like a formal girlfriend, but then she was a stripper and then she had two Brazilian roommates and they were also strippers and it was like a four-way like fuck buddy relationship where it was we were having four sums. If one of them was busy or work, we'd be having three sums. And her two roommates had boyfriends in other countries, but they were cheating with me and they were just like totally out of control. Like the one chick would like have me come on her face and then I remember one time she like called her boyfriend was like, I love you baby, all this shit while she has like cum dripping down her face, which was awesome. And then I got in a fucking fight outside. I have a video on my channel about that. I got in like a brawl with this bartender that was like talking all this shit um, outside of a nightclub in, in Portugal. And just all kinds of fun adventures over there. But there's a lot of Brazilians there because they come from Rio and different impoverished areas of Brazil. Um, and the main one that I was banging, she was super hot. She was half Japanese, half Brazilian. Anyways, I'll make a, a video about that. So. You want to go through the Michelle Thomas language learning. Uh, I'm not advocating you break the law and download torrents, but that is a resource to find these courses unless you want to buy them outright on his site. Um, and he does it for like the major languages. I think there's like 15 different languages. And this, this method is, I've used it for all these different languages. And then that way you don't have to spend months immersed in the culture and all this other stupid shit. Okay, but a lot of you aren't even international traveling, so this doesn't fucking apply to you. But for those of you that are, don't just try to rely on Google Translate. I did that in, when I lived in Beijing, and it, it just degrades everything. Like you have to keep, you have to keep like putting the translator back and forth. When you can at least speak basics, it's going to help you a lot. Um, okay, number three, the frame of why you are there. I highly advise. This is unethical, but I highly advise you guys to lie and say that you moved there for work. Okay, you don't want to say you are a tourist. Why? Because it has disadvantages. Okay. And why is that? In lots of these places, especially like what they call sex tourism locations where people go because they're some of the hottest girls in the world. Like I lived in Kiev, Ukraine. Okay. And I actually was living there. That wasn't just a trip. It started off as a trip and then I just started to live there. Um, and I, by the way, I would not recommend Ukraine because the girls are far too prude. I'll make a whole video on that as well. And send it to all these Ukrainian girls that I banged. A lot of them in Poland too. Um, are you Ukrainian? Anyways, the the purpose of doing that is because if you say that you're a tourist, a lot of these chicks think that you're just gunning for like a one night stand, and and, and that's gonna like make them not want to fuck with you because a lot of them are looking for something more, and they don't want to just get like used and dropped, right? Like they don't want to just have you bang them and fly away when they can't cultivate something more longer term with you. So even if I'm in, in, a, in a town, I, I, I stopped in Romania to visit this rich marketer that I know in Bucharest. And I was there like one day and I, and I, I banged like two different chicks. I think I pulled from a nightclub and banged a chick from an online game lead. And I was like, yeah, I just moved here. I'm going to be working. So that, that justifies why you're in an Airbnb or why you're in a hotel or, you know, why you don't know the area. I just moved here. Okay. My business partner is Colombian. My business partner is Polish. My business partner... And this guy doesn't exist, this business partner. Very, very, very rarely, like in Poland, I was there for like a year, and, and they're like, why are you here? Oh, I moved here. Okay, I moved here because my business partner was Polish. And a, a few girls I got more serious with eventually wanted to meet this business partner, and then you, you just take like a, a, a male Polish friend. Oh, yeah, we run a marketing company together. Okay. Um, usually, usually a fellow pickup artist guy. Uh, okay, but the importance of doing that is, like I said, the chicks, a lot of these chicks don't want to fuck a tourist. Okay. And it's going to put up a whole bunch of defenses 
and it's going to cause a bunch of bullshit for you. So like even in your online dating app profile, like in, in the Tinder profile, and I just signed up for Brazil Cupid today. My friend was laughing because I sent him a screenshot. In Brazil Cupid, it says 193 centimeters at six foot four in terms of height. New to Brazil, I am a DJ from New York who is now a local. Um, and as my, my tag headline, American DJ living in Urere Internacional. It's a, the coastal shore top part of Florianopolis. Okay, so I'm DHVing, demonstration of higher value. I'm a DJ. I live here. When I meet girls, oh yeah, what's up? I just moved here. I want to be DJing at, and I'll say like the top two clubs. Okay, and guys give me endless amounts of shit for that. That's not ethical. You're not really DJing here. You don't really live here. Okay, say say that you're a tourist and and have the girl unmatch you. Say, put in your profile <laughs> that you're you're there for three days or you're there for a week and watch how many. You're just gonna lose out on opportunities. Okay, say that. You know, say that you're an accountant, okay? And you know, I'm I'm looking for advantages here, okay? So if they think, wow, an American guy, I don't mean many of those, living in here, he's a fucking local, and he speaks Portuguese, okay? And he's gonna be DJing at these cool spots, etc. Like I want to find out more about him. That that's not like the, obviously the game is not relying on that, and it's not necessary. It's just giving you an added advantage. Okay, just like in the hygiene video, when you're well put together, when you're presenting yourself, okay, all these things contribute to give yourself an advantage. Now, number four, um, you want to scope out the best night game spots, the clubs and bars, and the best day game areas, okay? So, the way that I always do it, I'll type like club, well, first of all, I try to talk to people that, that have been there almost every time when I go somewhere. I know someone that's been there or I know someone who knows someone that's been there. Okay, that's going to be a good inside source. You can find out what were the best venues based on their experience. But if you don't have that, just type club, like club near whatever whatever the city is, okay, on Google Maps. And that's going to show you a listing of the clubs. And then you can just click on a bunch of them and look for, if there's like a whole ton of ratings, okay, that means it's pretty popular. And then what you can do is, I was just showing guys, when I, when I was teaching some guys in Boston recently, I was just showing some guys this. You can type the venue name space capacity just in a regular Google search. And it will tell you in almost every case how big the venue is. And I highly advise, the way I, I judge the criteria of picking the best venues for nighttime game for bar and club pickup is the capacity, is the size, okay, because sheer volume. And there's, there's many more reasons, but I just like to have a large, like if you're in a small venue, a small like hole in the wall bar, you know, for example, it's on the extreme, but if you run out of girls to talk to, then you're done there, okay? Whereas if, and plus you don't have, like say there's no hot girls in the bar. Like if you have a huge venue with lots of people, you're going to have ample amount of like 8.5 plus out of 10, okay? Which are the girls that I want to talk to. And you're not going to run out of girls to talk to. Plus, you can move them around the venue. You can the isolation goes up in utility. Now you can baby step them from the dance floor near the bar by the exit. You can move them from room to room, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so I, I type in venue capacity, and then I find usually through through again through contacts I already have there, but if not through this Google searching and Google Maps, I find the the biggest venues. And then likewise for daytime stuff you want to find like the shopping areas like in miami for instance i used to live in miami but i'm going to be teaching a program there in march the prime time day game okay i don't even like day game that much but the prime time area where you would meet girls during the day is on lincoln road okay which is just a strip of a whole bunch of restaurants and shopping and all this stuff and there's just girls constantly walking back and forth okay so you can do that to get your night game and your, your day game areas <clears throat> situated. You can you can find out where the malls are, etc. Those are your college campuses. Those are other day game locations. Um, back to the Tinder thing. You, you're gonna want your profile saying like that you just moved there, okay, for work, okay, new to wherever. And in the interactions, I very often say early on 
like in Puerto Rico, I I'm, I was one of the only white guys. I'm fucking six or four blue eyes. I always had to say hola, like, uh, ¿cómo se llama? Like she's telling me her name. I'm like, no, soy turista. I'm not a tourist. Okay, it's important to establish that frame in person because they don't fucking know. They're gonna assume I'm a tourist because I'm a white gringo. Okay, gringo is like someone that's not from the area. They're gonna assume I'm just a tourist and that I can't fucking speak Spanish and that I'm just looking to get a quick, easy lay, which, <laughs> which I am. But they think I'm just like there to like have a fuck vacation and then go home. Okay, in Puerto Rico, I was actually living there for a year. But you want to establish, because in the online game profile, she sees in your profile, okay, he's not a tourist. But in person, she's going to assume, especially if your skin color is different than what the locals are used to, if you don't want to be labeled as a tourist. Okay, no soy turista. Okay. Um, okay, so to recap, I got to come up with a fifth because I'm going to end up making the thumbnail. Five tips. <laughs> thumbnail fucking bullshit hype. Five tricks when traveling to a new place. Um, okay, so set your Tinder to the new location. Like I said, when I, when I went to Columbia, I had the whole first week stacked up with about three dates per day on average. That's pretty fucking huge. That's I was going on close to like 20 dates the first week. All right, and then that they don't all close, but that filters down to a whole bunch of closes. That's what allowed me to bang a whole shitload. Me and Sonny, uh, Sonny Arvado, who I used to be friends with back in the day, he was on that trip with me, and we made a video. It was like 28 girls banged in eight days between the two of us. Okay, and, and how is that possible? We're also pulling from nightclubs. We're also meeting girls during the daytime. But I had all these dates stacked, as I've said time and time and time again, getting lots of girls in this game is a function of getting a lot of leads, setting a lot of dates, closing a lot of them, and then filtering down to which are the best ones, the hottest ones you have the best chemistry with to keep around as rotation girls. So you're going to want to move your location. You're going to want to say that you just moved there for work in your profile. And I'm not, this isn't an online game video, but you should have professional pictures, solid pictures. So you already have a good advantage in the first place. If they speak a different language, you're going to want to go through that course in advance, just 10 hours. Lots of times you can do it on the plane ride. Um, the frame should be, you just move there and you're not a tourist. You want to say that in person as well. Scoping out the best nightclubs and day game areas. Um, and then I would say number five, try to book your accommodation, whether it be, excuse me, a hotel or an Airbnb, try to book it right near uh, venues you can go for dates, whether that be a bar, coffee shop, whatever. You don't want to book something that's far away. I guess this would be like a logistics point. You don't want to book something like, so we're, we arrange our Airbnb, this area in Brazil, so we're right near all the clubs and there's shops, like coffee shops and bars and stuff right near us. So now we have good logistics for dates, we have good logistics for club pulling. You're gonna to want to be like in the heart of everything, okay? If you want to be a cheap fuck, and be like, I'm gonna live outside the downtown just so I can like save a hundred bucks or two hundred bucks or whatever. Okay, now you're gonna run into situations where the chick's like, ah, uh, that's too far from me. Like, let's meet in this area close to the center. And then when you go do that date and you're like, let's go back after, oh no, that's too far. Let's meet up a different time. Okay, now you're fucking yourself over. Now you're wasting your time because you were a cheap fuck, okay? So get <laughs> get decent logistics that are gonna allow your dates uh, to be close by and also the, the night game venues to be close enough by. Okay, with, with night game venues, ideally you wanna be within 10 to 15 minutes, um, but you can stretch that to 25 to 30 minutes max. Over 30 minutes it gets to be a little dicey um, on a pole situation. And with that, oh, one other logistics point, try to get a place that has like a balcony or a jacuzzi like we got an airbnb that has a jacuzzi okay i'm going with a bunch of advanced friends has a jacuzzi and like a a rooftop and like all this shit you can take pictures of that shit and now for every date hey let's hang out in the jacuzzi hey let's go on let's hang out on my balcony hey let's hang out on my rooftop okay now you can suggest that as your date activity rather than even having to fucking do the public date <clears throat> now you have an excuse okay when you're at the fucking when we're at the beach when we're at the daytime parties, okay, during the, um, by the beach, when we're at the nightclubs, hey, and I'll say this in Portuguese, we have this fucking, <laughs> we have this motherfucking, 
We have this jacuzzi. Let's all go hang out there. Okay, answer objection, answer objection. And I'm with I'm with advanced friends, and Brazilian girls are, are notoriously fairly easy. This is going to be shooting fish in a barrel. Okay, <laughs> let's put a bunch of advanced and elite top guys in the game uh, in a city which is arguably the hottest girls in the world. Okay, because they have the European faces and eyes with the Brazilian bodies. And then let's give us like a pimped out fucking pad with great logistics, and like everyone having extreme objection handling and pulling abilities and volume lead working abilities it's just going to be mayhem all right and after we already talked about it this is my idea but after we close after we close any particular new chick when you invite her over a different day for a repeat have her bring her hot friends and then boom the friends are ready at the house if if they connect with with one of the other guys then boom that they can just go to their room and, and close there it's going to be totally out of control, and knowing the language helps, and then we've got the DJ, demonstration, and you, 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 you this should start, <laughs> fucking marble mouth, uh, I had a reporter call me marble mouth in a feminist slander article, marble mouth, um, What was I po- oh, you, you guys should start to see how this is like all coming. Like what I'm, what I'm, all these points I'm making. It's all these things coming together to give you advantage. Okay, and this is this is the kind of shit I live for. All right, we're gonna have the hottest girls with the best guys in the game, with uh, speaking the language, having the value from the, the cool place that we have, that's near the cool venues. I'm a DJ that has high value there, and then we're all just generally fun, cool guys that know how to grease the wheels to pull and make shit happen. Okay. And if you are interested in training, I've had some people inquire, and it, this training is not cheap, obviously. And that there's guys that are like, I can afford $1,000. No, okay, obviously that's light years off. But if you are interested in that Brazil training, um, email me at johnnyantonylifestyle at gmail.com. We can go over pricing and details. That's it. Thank you so much for tuning in. And if you do not have the ability to travel due to financial me- reasons uh, or you know, not being able to get time off work, try to fucking improve your financial and business situation so you do have these opportunities because life is short and we are not getting any younger. Okay, thank you for watching. Take care. I will make a bunch of videos from the beach in Brazil and you guys will be jealous as fuck. Uh, I'll try to get some girls that, that can speak broken English to come on camera with me. It'll be hilarious. All right, anyways, thank you for watching and take care. Bye-bye. Yeah.